Okay, let's get started. It's November 5th, 2024. And in this video, I'm going to talk about my ASI 294mm Pro camera. It's about time to say goodbye to it. Again, it's because of some compromises I have to make in order to make sure the equipment that I'm placing in Starfront observatories has a high degree of being successful in that environment where I'm not there to do things uh, with the scope once it's, uh, once it's installed. Hi, I'm Bill, and welcome to Astro Vagabond. So, I have been, I've owned this uh, camera for a couple years, the ASI 294mm Pro monochrome camera. It's really been a great performer, but it's really designed for a uh, imager that is in front of the telescope that has the ability to put a flat panel on it um, because this sensor um, we'll look down here they don't have the um, the pictures but um, this sensor here the IMX 492 it uh, produces amp glow and so what you see is a little bit of amp glow up in the uh, upper right corner of each of your exposure but with the proper calibration frames it comes right out without any problem and but one of the frames that you need and one of the frames that you can't use is you can't use bias frames so you need to use flats and then flat darks the flat darks are in lieu of the bias and that reason is because this sensor uh, has it's different some other from some other sensors so you need to take an exposure at a minimum of about three seconds to be successful in producing your calibration frames so your your uh, flats and then your uh, flat darks which would be at a corresponding uh, exposure as your flat for each of your filters so with me placing this equipment into the remote observatory um, i'm not going to be able to be there to put the lens cap on i'm a nina user i use the flat wizard in nina and so i put my light panel on my giotto light panel which i also just put up for sale on uh, cloudy nights and then I take the flats and then the sequence stops and says, okay, put your cap on. I'm not going to be able to do that down with this uh, Red Cat 51 hosted in the uh, remote observatory. So what I decided to do and have done is I have um, purchased this camera, the ASI 2600mm Pro. It does not have amp glow. Therefore, when it comes to producing calibration frames, I can use bias, I can use darks, and then I can use flats. And with the flat panel, I purchased the Deep Sky Dad uh, flat panel designed for the Red Cat 51. Uh, I'll be able to control that remotely and open and close it. And it will also serve as a uh, lens cap in a sense, so I can close things up. Um, and so uh, that's what I'm doing. Now, the compromise is, well, I'm spending money uh, to do this. Uh, and the other compromise is the 3.76 micron uh, pixel size compared to the um, 2.3 of the ASI 294mm uh, Pro when you're using it in bin one mode. 
And for the 294, there's also a bin 2 mode where you can convert that uh, pixel size to 4.63, 4.64. And so I thought I would be using this on my Edge HD8 because of the longer focal length of the Edge 8. But since I'm also putting the Edge A Edge HD8 into the remote observatory as well, this uh, 294 is uh, just no longer a good camera for my needs moving into an observatory. But um, and I've also uh, produced a video. If anyone's interested in the 294, uh, again, I'll be listing it up on cloudy nights once I get the uh, 2600. Uh, but I have a video on how to do a sensor analysis if you're a user user and you use Hocus Focus. There's a facility within that Hocus Focus where you can uh, uh, put a link to your sensor analysis file for uh, your camera. And that's what I did. And this just kind of shows how to do it using SharpCap Pro. Uh, to generate the uh, sensor file. So, yep, this morning uh, I ordered the uh, um, camera, the 2600. Uh, Woodland had it in a stock. Uh, Agena did not, so I gave the order to uh, Woodland. And uh, I should have that in a few days. And uh, then I will uh, I'll sit down and I'll create my uh, dark library with the camera and, and those type of things. The normal things you might do when you get a new camera or, you know, refresh your darks library every so often. And I'll, I'll take a bunch of bias files, uh, bias uh, exposures as well. And, um, and that's the way we're going to go. But I really, I really love the quality that the 294 uh, can provide and I think for the right type of imager who has the ability to be in front of their equipment and uh, perform the uh, flat darks uh, as needed uh, that uh, it could be an excellent camera I haven't set a price on it yet and the other thing about the 2600 is um, since my Red Cat 51 has a rot rotator on it, uh, I'm going to be rotating the camera at times. And uh, this, uh, this camera is going to make it a lot simpler because then I just have to capture flats for the rotation angle that I use for that target. And I don't have to worry about the, uh, the flat darks. Um, I am going to do a short video. I was down in Borrego Springs. If you saw my other videos, um, Sunday night, I decided to try and take some uh, sky flats. Again, I'm a U Nina user. I can use the flat wizard and it has a sky flat facility in there. Actually, I was surprised at uh, started around twilight. Not that difficult. Uh, I'll talk about it in the uh, video um, and uh, you know I thought okay I could take sky flats for my uh, camera down uh, that I have on the Red Cat 51 once it's in the observatory but because I'm going to be rotating I think the uh, Deep Sky Dad uh, flat panel that I just purchased uh, is going to pay off. Uh, in in the long run. So again, um, this is a theme about compromises that we may have to make from time to time. And this is uh, one of them. But uh, it's the right decision for me, the right compromise for me to be able to more easily manage my Red Cat 51 uh, once it's hosted in the star front uh, observatories outside Bray, Texas. All right. <clears throat> if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. I'm also going to be uh, doing a video about how I'm going to swap out my Eagle 5S probably 
which I'm using on my Edge HD8 and I think I'm going to use it with my Red Cat 51. Uh, again, if you've been following the channel, I had some concerns about cable management for my Red Cat, but more in that uh, video, if you have an interest in that, uh, be sure and hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you know when that uh, video comes out. So, yeah, thanks again for dropping into the channel. Again, uh, likes are very helpful to uh, the channel. So if you like this content, give it a thumbs up. Uh, and other than that, clear skies.